Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo again today. Now we have done many, many videos, and in those videos we have, of course, said people can write us in, they can message us, they can comment on other things they want us to talk about. Medical, housing, the zoo, animals, pet care, whatever. And we've had some people write us in. One of the things that we're going to cover today, and this is, uh, this is, this is really, really important. It's kind of under, uh, underestimated, but it is really important. Um, there's scale rot, mouth rot, and shell rot. There's a, a lot of different types of rot when it comes to reptiles. We're going to cover scale rot today, okay? So let's take a look at scale rot, the causes, uh, some treatments, uh, and things that can be done as far as preventative care to keep scale rot from happening. Let's go. Okay, so first, let's talk about what is scale rot. Scale rot is, a, or scale rot affects, scale rot affects the ventral scales, also known as the belly scales, okay? What is scale rot? Scale rot is essentially a blistering of the scales. Um, also, it could be a bacterial or fungal infection that affects those belly scales. It's pus-filled, fluid-filled, bacterial, fungal pockets that affect the scales on the belly of a snake. Or also, can a lizard, nine times out of 10, it's on a snake. Okay, so how does scale rot occur? All right, so there's several ways scale rot can occur. Now, number one, and if you've seen the video on respiratory infections, you know kind of where we do education as far as humidity goes. Too much humidity, too much water, very, very bad thing, okay? One of the biggest causes of scale rot is too much moisture. Think about it in the sense of like bed sores and things like that where um, something is sitting in, in a mass amount of water or fecal or things just all the time and that bacteria starts to infect and affect the animal, human, whatever the case may be. Okay, So in the case of scale rot, now scale rot can be caused by way too much bedding, too much moisture continuously sitting on wet moist bedding all the time which causes a bacterial or fungal buildup. Now, other ways that scale rot can happen is from abrasions, uh, from habitat, from items inside of the habitat, whatever the case may be, from fighting with another animal potentially, um, where a scratch happens or an abrasion happens or some kind of a wound happens and the bacteria starts to, of course, do its dirty work, as we put it. Um, it starts to cause an infection inside of that cavity the scratch wound, whatever the case may be, and then scale rot can occur from there. Now, another way that it can happen is from burns. All right, one of the things that a lot of people will use is um, these heat pads, these heat mats, and those things are those things. They're okay, but when the the thermostat short circuits, uh, the internal thermostats, the ones that have those, they start to short circuit. Um, or if there's water that gets over the top of it, and it's already really hot, then it starts. It starts blistering them. Um, too much heat. Uh, heat rocks, really, really bad thing, okay? We, we've learned this from years and years and years of, of, of searching, discovering, um, of research and things like that. Because um, we've seen a lot of reptiles that will get bad, bad burned um, from these heat rocks. Heat rocks, bad thing. But the you know, like your zoom in heat pads, your, uh, your heat tape, things like that, those are good. Just make sure they're on a thermostat. But the problem is, is if it's against the direct surface and there's no barrier, there's no cushion between there and it gets too hot, then it will cause a blistering effect, which can turn into, again, scale rot, okay? Okay, so before we get into some of the treatment methods that are used, whether we use them, uh, you know, another facility uses them, how, how, whatever the case may be, let's talk about preventative measures. All right, so one of the things that you can do to prevent scale rot is, of course, keeping a nice, dry, clean, healthy environment. Um, sometimes you cannot help if you've got this nice big rock or this, these half hide logs, the, the wooden hide logs. You know, if they go against it really, really hard or they're climbing across it and they tear up one of the belly scales and it causes, that you cannot help. But by and large, you, you can keep it from getting infected 
by keeping a clean, dry environment, okay? Now, in the case of rack systems, yeah, when you're using just paper towels, you're using just newspaper, we see uh, burns, scale rot from burns, happen a lot from those um, due to ineffective thermostats. Uh, And they have a probe that's sitting on top of one piece of heat tape um, that controls a lot of the, of the rack systems, and that's the way they're supposed to be built. But if the, if the thermostat goes bad, then, of course, it starts to heat up, and it just continues to heat and continues to heat and continues to heat, and it can cause those surface burns. But by and large, by and large, you can prevent scale rot from ever happening, especially due to water issues or too much moisture, just by keeping a nice clean, dry environment. Now also bear in mind, mites are going to be more prevalent in a warm, moist environment because they lay their eggs inside of a warm, moist environment. So the drier you keep your habitat and keeping your habits, your habitats clean, um, you can also help with the prevention. It's not going to completely prevent it, but you can help with the prevention of mites and not having mites accrue. Um, remember, warm, moist environments is gonna create the mites, and mites can also be a, uh, a helping factor in spreading bacteria um, and causing more issues inside of your habitat as well. Now, let's talk about some of the treatment methods that are used. Uh, iodine, betadine is really good. It acts like an antiseptic. Um, it's a good pretreatment. Um, you can do anything from a weak tea to a more heavy tea colored uh, soak. Uh, you can soak them in it, you can apply it like an applicator uh, by, by um, cotton ball or by q-tip, things like that. Um, novice and scrubs uh, or another one, just kind of keeping that clean. One of the best methods is, um, especially if it was like a bacteria or a fungal, uh, fungal especially, you can use different fungal treatments, but the hands down, one of the best things uh, that anybody can treat uh, scale rot with is SSD cream. SSD cream is meant for burns, of course, um, and of course it's going to help treat those burns um, or those the scale rot due to burns, and you're going to see a real heavy pink coloration. It's going to be real wrinkly. It may even be real raw looking, may be oozing. Um, your scale rot due to um, maybe an abrasive um, a habitat abrasion uh, may just be this fluid field or scab looking field, blood filled pocket, uh, just one scale or maybe a few scales in a row uh, here or there. Uh, but a burn is definitely going to affect a big wide area. You'll, you'll know if it's a burn. Um, and then when it comes to uh, when it comes to moisture scale rot, uh, it can affect a larger area. Um, and it's going to be more wrinkly. It's going to be uh, it's going to have some pinkish color to it as well. And it's also going to be blistery looking it's good because it's, it's filled with uh, with a lot of fluid. Um, it's fluid buildups, fluid pockets. Now, SSD cream, hands down, like I said, SSD cream is one of the best things you can treat it with, um, especially if it's bad enough. Medications can be used, um, and, and, and antibiotic medications. There are multiple different types of antibiotics that's used. Uh, there's multiple creams that's used. There's multiple uh, different different treatments, um, even things such as, especially if it was just a simple infection starting off, you can use uh, veterisin. You can use like a veterisin topical. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the simple treatment, uh, not necessarily peroxide, but like a, a iodine, betadine, you can do uh, neosporin, antibiotic ointment, things like that, if it, if it was just a, a simple first off thing. Um, but if it's really, really bad, and, uh, and the bacteria, or especially the fungus, has gotten really bad or the burn is really bad, then SSD cream hands down is what you're gonna to wanna to go with. SSD cream uh, is gonna heal that up and it's a really good medication. So that's some of the ways that uh, that scale rot is treated as well. But remember, scale rot doesn't happen all that often and it's a good thing, um, especially considering all of the reptiles, especially snakes that are bred and in captivity. But this is what you have to look out for. Remember, too much, too much moisture, too much wet bedding and not being dried up fast enough, not being kept clean, that will cause scale rot on the moisture side. Uh, bacteria and fungal infections due to, of course, again, wet, wet bedding, but it starts to grow fungus inside of the pen. Um, surface abrasions to the ventral scales, the belly scales, uh, will cause open, uh, open cavities, I guess is the best way to put it, open cavities, open wounds. That can cause bacteria to get in there and spread. And then, of course, you have your burn uh, scale rot, which of course is going to be from maybe being around a light 
or being on top of a heat pad that uh, got too hot inside of a rack system where the thermostat malfunctioned. It just got hot some way, somehow, and it created that burn, surface burn, scale rot, okay? Now, this is scale rot. This is just a quick overview. Just like always, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Send us in messages. Let us know what you want to see, what you want to learn about, what you want to hear about. Um, we're happy to help you out. We look forward to seeing you here at the zoo. Now, this is Chad, again, with the Reptile Rangers. We'll see you on the next episode, or you will see you at the zoo.